Can I get a hug? No, you can't get a hug. Gentlemen, here's the deal. Unfortunately, some of you are making some mistakes that are common with nice guys. And the reason why this is a problem is that if you are perceived as a nice guy, you are also indicating to other people that you have low value. And as a man, if you're perceived to have low value by other people, you're not going to get as many high quality spicy senoritas. You're basically going to get everybody else's sloppy seconds. You're not going to make as much money. You're not going to have as many friends. You are not going to live the life that you could if you had higher perceived value. Today, guys, I'm going to go over a few nice guy mistakes mistakes holding you back in terms of value. Number one is you don't have boundaries, right? This is one that is crazy, wickedly important, right? One of the most attractive traits that a man, high value man can possess is setting personal boundaries with people, with situations, with things in general. And if you're somebody that is always available, if you're always open, if you're always like allowing people to take advantage of you, this indicates and signifies to other people that you have low value. Number two is fake nice behavior, right? This is very common with the nice guy. He does nice gestures or kind things for other people thinking that it's going to get him something in return. There's a shady ulterior motive as opposed to just being a good dude. Number three is you avoid conflict, right? If you're always saying yes, if you're never basically standing up for yourself or people around you, this signifies to other people that you basically are a pussy. Gentlemen, nobody is attracted to pussy. Actually, that's not true. Check that. <laughs> Dudes are attracted to that. Uh, let me think of a better way to put that. Nobody is attracted to a weak man. Better. Next up is you're needy, whether or not it's with people or with girls or whatever, right? There's nothing sexy about a dude that's always like needy and sort of like pathetic, honestly, because that's what it comes across, right? A competent high value man, he's not needy. He brings the value to the party, right? And so other people want to be around him. But if you're somebody that's always needy or kissing people's ass, unfortunately, nobody respects you. Next up, you've got submissive body language, all right? And this one, unfortunately, is very common, especially especially with the amount of time that we spend on our cell phones not looking at people or learning to actually communicate in person. If you instantly want to raise your value as a man, you need to start being able to communicate better. You also need to stand with confidence, have good posture, look people in the eye, smile, shake hands. If your handshake is weak, this makes you look low value. It's about confidence, gentlemen. It's about carrying yourself like a man. Which brings me to the next thing, and that is your body. You look sloppy, you look doughy, you don't look strong in terms of your physique. Physique. And I know that some people are going to be like, that sucks, you suck, right? Whatever. The truth is, if you look weak as a man, this is something that is going to be perceived as low value, all right? Because high value men take care of their bodies. High value men have body fats under 15%. High value men do the things they need to do in order to take care of the temple, which brings me to the next thing and reason why people perceive you as low value. You dress like shit. One of the quickest and easiest things you can do to elevate your perception in terms of value is start dressing with style and intention. Dress like a grown up. A few pro tips. Invest in a high quality suit that is tailored. Nothing is going to make you look more confident and successful like rocking a suit. Now, some of you are like, I don't wear a suit often. That's okay. You can also look stylish and grown up when you're dressed down a little bit, right? This outfit that I'm rocking is a perfect example. I've got the light gray slacks. They are tailored. They are tapered at the bottom not big and baggy and floppy and then the polo shirt right this is not your daddy's polo this is elevated in terms of aesthetic it's from collars and co guys if you are looking to instantly upgrade your shirt game this summer collars and co has you covered in the most perfect polos out there and the thing that i love so much about them is the fit the fabric the construction, not to mention those badass collars. Guys, they've got four different collars for you to choose from. And the thing that you gotta understand is that these collars are kind of like dress shirt collars. And that's the reason why everybody freaked out on Shark Tank. The first time I heard or saw Collars and Co was on Shark Tank. And I knew what Mark Cuban knew, which is these shirts solve a problem for men. All right, guys wanna look good, they wanna look casual, but they don't wanna look sloppy and like a little boy. And standard polos with their crappy cotton and their floppy collars look like a little boy. These bad boys are sexy, they're stylish, they're grown up, and they are a must have for every stylish dude that wants to look high value. Guys, I'm gonna have a link down below this video to go check out Collars & Co. If you go through my special link and use my code, 
you're gonna get a super badass discount. Now, they've got polos, but they also have a lot of other amazing, sexy clothing, right? If you're looking for a jacket, if you're looking for a sport coat. They've also got lightweight merino wool sweaters that are amazing, right? The V-neck is perfect, all right? Check it out. The Collars & Co. polo, this one is white. And the thing that I also love about this shirt, look how deep the plaque it is, right? It's a dressed up polo, which is something that I feel every guy needs. The collar on this one, it's a button-down collar, but they've got three other options as well, including the cutaway, the standard spread, and the English spread. But one of my favorite things about these polos is that you can wear them underneath of a suit or a sweater, and you don't have the sleeves getting all bunched up and crazy, all right? Check this out. One of my go-to looks, right? When I want to look dressy without like putting on a suit, check it out, right? How perfect is this outfit, right? Going out on a date, going to a nice restaurant, going to a party, right? It's clean, grown up, high value perfection. Hit the link down below. If you're interested in upgrading and elevating your polo, now is the time. It's almost the season, and I don't want you to miss out. They've got so many badass colors. They've got different patterns, but the bottom line, all of their shirts look amazing and fit incredible, and also will help upgrade and elevate your perception in terms of value. Guys, I also, down below, I'm gonna link to a video that I did talking about some polo wearing don'ts so that you always look amazing, sexy and fresh, rocking your polo as opposed but my mom says I look handsome. <laughs> That's funny because your mom calls me daddy. What? I'm kidding. Totally kidding. That was a joke. What I'm not joking about is these polos are perfection. Guys, hit the link down below. Check out Collars & Co. Use that discount code for a limited time amazing deal on the most perfect polos on the market. The next nice guy mistake is over complimenting. All right, now this one I got to unpack a little bit, right? I talk about the importance of giving people compliments. It's one of the things that you can do to really show your comfort in your own skin. It also makes makes the other person feel good about themselves and they like you more, right? It also feels great to give compliments, but there's a fine line between giving compliments and overdoing it. When you give somebody a compliment, it needs to be authentic. It also doesn't need to be like every single time you meet them or talk to them or if you give them like 10 compliments in a conversation, this is definitely too much. It makes you look low value. The next mistake is passivity, all right? always being passive, never taking action or basically making decisions, all right? If you're somebody that's always like, I don't care, whatever you wanna do, or I don't care, where do you wanna go to eat, right? This is something that nice guys do, right? If you're somebody that has an opinion, state it, it's okay. And it's okay to basically wanna do something and it's okay to make a decision. Not only is it okay, it's critical that you do. Because when you are concise and decisive with your actions and what you want, this automatically makes you look high value. The next thing is low standards. Standards. All right, this one is a big one because a lot of you settle, right? Because you're worried that you can't get better or you're worried that if you actually try for something better or more amazing that you're not gonna achieve it. And so what happens is you basically reduce your standards, whether or not it's dating somebody, all right, or getting a job or just going after your dreams. You basically don't have high standards for yourself, which in turn makes other people view you as low value, right? Because high value men, they've got high standards for the way that they carry themselves, the people they interact with, their friendships, not to mention their career path. The next mistake is martyr syndrome, something very common with nice guys. Basically, you act like you're a victim, right? For attention or for a helping hand or, you know, to get somebody to do something for you, right? Don't act like a victim, right? You are not a victim. You are strong, you are capable, you are competent. And this is what high value men understand. If you're somebody that's always getting upset and mad and like bad things always happen and it's never your fault, right? This is something that is super unattractive. It's also low value. High value men take ownership for their actions and their life. Which brings me to the last thing that's gonna make you look low value, and that is not accepting responsibility for your mistakes. All right, if you're somebody that is always deflecting or you're somebody that's always like, not me, it's not my fault, whatever, right, or looking for an out or blaming somebody else, automatically it's gonna make you look super low value. The high value man accepts the responsibility, they accept their mistakes, and they apologize when something's wrong, but they don't overly apologize, which I'm gonna basically throw in a bonus. One of the other things that nice guys do that automatically reduces your perceived value is apologizing too much for things that aren't your fault. Now, for me, I come from a long line of people pleasers. I get it, I know what it's about, right? I was always the type of person that wanted people to like me, not be mad at me, and so so I would apologize for things that weren't even my fault, right? And what happens when you do this is it makes you look super weak. It also basically interferes with you feeling confident and good about yourself. It's not your fault. If it's not your fault, do not accept ownership or responsibility for it. And do not apologize for things that aren't your fault.